Okay, so I've got a project and we've been talking about it for a while. <clears throat> and this is the FANUC robot socket. Uh, it's actually used uh, on another video for just some original cam turning. But what I want to do is um, I want to I want to start using some uh, multi-axis milling on it. And so I'll show you what the finished product looks like. It should should look like something like this. Get that into focus here for us. Um, I'm going to take this part. I'm going to go ahead and leave all of the turning parts in it. Uh, same drawing. I'm just going to add. Um, I'm going to add this backside dovetail or extension on it. Um, then I'm going to add these flats around the outside of it. Then six holes that they are um, 420 through. Small chamfer on the outside of them. And then we have three angled flats that come across here, and they're really about 590 um, across this direction and this direction as well. So um, I'm not really super concerned about dimensions on it. Uh, it's really to get the just the idea of doing multi-axis on here, because that's really, uh, in 135, we're really concerned about that, bringing in that multi-axis element pretty soon. So um, a couple things about Fusion. Um, and this really works with about any CAM program that we have, is that we're going to still take this same drawing. So we're not going to have multiple drawings of what's going on. We're going to have the same drawing. Um, we're going to have, this, we're gonna have uh, on the manufacturing side, we're going to have uh, the same manufacturing setup, whether it's the STY or ST15Y for the turning part of it. And really on the STY, you can really do a big part of this, it's gonna be a little difficult to do these angled flats on the front, but you can do the flats across the outside of it and then the, and then the holes that run through it. Um, but we're gonna do our milling on uh, one of our UMCs. Um, so we're gonna do five axis milling for all the rest of it. We'll hold on the back side in a dovetail. So let's start there. I'll go back to design. And you should have already had this um, project drawn up, you have the original print for the part itself. Um, first, what I wanna do is add on a backside that'll be my, uh, eventually be my dovetail. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start a new drawing and uh, just a new design. And I'm gonna make it just something real simple. Um, and this is something that we can modify and manage as we go. Two inch diameter. I want it to be about three eighths thick. So just gonna take and extrude it by three eighths of an inch, so 0.375. Now, what I like to do on these <clears throat> is I like to go ahead and make sure that the colors are not the same. So my robot um, extension, uh, robot socket is is red. So uh, this add-on piece, which I'm gonna go in and, and name it, it's gonna go into that file, um, file, management super important to us. So um, I'm just going to call this the um, I'm going to call it dovetail for right now. Um, dovetail add on for right now for lack of a better term. Uh, I'm going to save it. I'm going to close that drawing out. And then I'm going to, I want to add it onto the back side of this piece. So I'm going to open up the waffle. And there's my dovetail add on. Earlier I made one called the dovetail extension. And so I'm going to take this, just pan out just a little bit more. And then I'm going to take this guy and then just bring him in here. Just drop it into the drawing. <clears throat> and you'll see. Um, it's trying to figure out what, what you want to do with it. And so I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. I'm just going to leave it just like it is. That's not right. Um, we're going to go into an assembly. And we're going to select this diameter. And we're going to attach it to this diameter. And there we go. So now we've got our extension in there. And now the good thing about this is that it's two separate pieces. And so really, in your turning, you could have it go back this extra uh, area. We, we did that in our, in our 
uh, in class the other day with, with all the 135s, we added an additional 3 8 on there. Now you can go back in, if you put the dovetail in this drawing, um, so if you, um, let's do a quick save here. Um, so here, and if you go back to the waffle, and then let, let's just say we go back to our, our, our dovetail add-on, and we put the actual dovetail in it, and we put all the other pieces to it, then um, it's going to update. It's going to be live as we go. We can turn it off and on so that we can see it and not, if, and just in case we want to have a section where we can't see it. When we get into our multi-axis stuff, um, we're going to be adding in the, the, the vise and the extension just so we end up seeing uh, what everything looks like as we go. That way we don't have any surprises when we get in there. Okay, so I've saved. Uh, you can't save enough really. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go to my front view of this part. And I'm just going to put another drawing on this outside here. So I'm starting to sketch and I want it to be here. Bring this out. I'm going to go to create. I'm going to create a polygon, circumscribed polygon. Uh, these are going to be my six flats. And so I want to put them across here. And I know, according to the drawing, that it's 1.9 across the flats. And so if I want to do the math on that, I can. Um, or I can just come back here, go back, polygon, circumscribe, and here we go. I can just go 1.9 um, divided by two, and that gives me my same same thing. Now, if I want it to go ahead and be um, the way that it needs to be alignment-wise, I can do that as well. So I can go up here and dimension this from here to, oh, I better put a line in just to give me some boundary. So let's just put in a straight line here. Um, and then we'll just dimension this thing out from here to here. Um, so that needs to be about 60 degrees, I think. Yep, that looks right. I can live with that. Um, and then now I can get rid of this. Okay, at this point I'll do a quick save. So all I have is, um, I got my add-on. Let me move it over here just a little bit. I got my add-on on the back and then I've got this new sketch that's put on the front. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a solid um, and I'm going to cut. And I wanna go back this other way. Um, okay, so I got a little bit of a problem here. Um, let's see. I've had this problem before with cutting. Sometimes in the assembly of things, um, it doesn't quite want to do what I want it to do. So I'm going to go back and this drawing might still be attached to something else. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back. Since this drawing really is attached to some other things, I'm going to go ahead and do a file. Sorry, go back here and do a save as. And instead of Fanic Robot Socket video misspelled, um, we're going to change it to Robot Socket Multi Axis video and then we'll still save it in that same file folder let's see if that helps us out any and we want to do a cut no oh I'm sorry I know what I'm doing wrong Let's go back to here. Instead of just this section, we need to bring a circle out around it. Um, something about like that. It was doing what it was supposed to do. I just wasn't thinking about what it was supposed to do. So I want to take this section here. I want to cut it. And we'll just go back. Just back far enough to get those flats in. That should be plenty far. Let's just say we're going to go back 2.5. All right, so you gotta do that circle around the outside of it. Um, otherwise, uh, it was trying to cut in the way that it should. All right, so this gives us our six flats. Okay, so now we'll do a save. 
probably was smart to just rename that to something different anyways. Um, next, we need to come in and we need to put some holes in here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start a new sketch. It's going to be on this face. And let's rotate it back over. Uh, let's see, where are we at? Uh, that's Those holes are centered. Looks like they're an inch and a quarter from the front. So what I'm going to do, pan this over a little bit. And I'm just going to create a point and let's just put it right there and then let's see how far back it is. And it's really not necessary to create a point like this. You can just create a hole. Um, I've kind of developed the habit of doing that. I'm not sure why. Um, then from this point, you can create your hole. So you just go over here to solid and you put your hole or you find a center point really easily there bring this up um let me put this around just so we can see the center of that hole just a little bit better we don't need to go quite 900 deep I'll bring this over here mm -hmm. okay so let's get to our dimensions our diameter is 420 We've got an insert drill that size and then our hole depth and even though hole depth really doesn't matter it it does too because what we want to do is make sure that it goes through it uh, but not not so deep that it's gonna you know really start to cause some other problems so we want to go down through the hole and that should break through plenty good we'll go ahead and put a chamfer on that hole and then we'll go, let's say, out to 500. See how that, what that looks like. And instead of 82 degrees, let's go 90 degrees. Just a real easy 45 degree chamfer. And let's see how that looks. Okay, I think I like that. Go ahead and save it. Okay, so now I've got this one hole going around here. Now, I could do this a couple different ways as far as making my flats and making my holes. And feel free to kind of play around with what works best for you. Uh, I think I've said more and more over the years that um, in manufacturing, there's about 15 different ways to get it done. There are some ways that are probably the, the best case scenario or the best practices. But, there are, but you need to find a thing that really works good for you. All right, so now we're going to create a circular pattern and it's going to be this circular pattern okay so we're going to go here and here and those are those are the things that we're going to rotate and then we're going to rotate them about this axis and we're going to make six of them so now you can see i've got six holes now all six of those holes are around the outside of that thing all right, so that's going pretty fast. That doesn't take long at all to do. It's one of the things I love about Fusion is that this is really, it's intuitive. It, it just kind of, it, it's almost like you can, you can anticipate and it can anticipate what you want to do. Um, and as we're learning Mastercam here at the same time, Mastercam for me has had a little bit more learning curve. I've also been using this program for probably about seven years. So it does get a little bit easier as you go. Okay, so I'm gonna rotate this back around so you can see the front of it. Okay, so um, I've got my flats rotated out. So I got a flat here, a flat here. See how see what that looks like in orientation. Um, so I should have a flat on the bottom. Um, let's see. Oh, so my flat at the bottom. All right, so my three flats across here are in the same orientation as every other flat. Okay, so I need to make sure that mine match up with that. All right, let's do this. Let's create a point. Not there. And not there, but in between those two, what's the dimension? Three point 
399. So I'm going to take and put one more point right along that line. And let's see if we're 200 away from it, or at least symmetrical. 178. Let's go point uh, one nine nine five, and then we'll do the same thing over here. Two o two. All right, so let's go point two o one. I'll see if we're symmetrical over here. Two hundred. We're within a thou there. Now let's see if we can take a line from here and we should be able to, let's go 650, tab 135. Uh, yeah, that did it. That's, I don't know that I'm, it's not typically the way that I do it, but pretty janky way really so let's trim it out we can use it for now and probably in class we'll do some other work on it that's a pretty shady way of doing that let's see if we can make a plane from that so we'll go to construct plane at an angle we'll do it across this face I like that um, and we'll go from there Okay, so now I've got a plane on, uh-oh, not going to work, so at the wrong angle. Let's go back into that angle plane. And let's go, we got to, we don't want to switch it that way, so this will have to go 20 degrees. Um, we want to go 90 degrees. Ah, there we go. That's more like it. Okay. I can live with that plane. So it's at 45 degrees. And although it's not exactly where I want, it's pretty darn close. Let's go back and we want this dimension from here to here to be 590. I'm gonna go ahead and come here and save before that one took me longer than it should have. So I wanna make sure I don't have a problem there again. I'm gonna start a new square here on this face or a new drawing here on this face let's get back up to it this is my plane that i'm working off of and i'm going to put a rectangle along this face and um it's going to be let's go like um one tab one we'll make a one inch square um and you're going to see it's going to be on that face at that angle it's not quite centered up though so let's get it let's get it in the middle so from here to here we're going to be 500 that looks way better and then we'll go from oh let's go this edge to this edge um no let's go this edge so center line edge to center line better probably put a point there so put a point right here in the middle give me a little reference bring that over so from here 870 no go but 500 probably go. Okay, so, and like I said, normally this isn't how I would do it. I'm just spacing out just a little bit right now. Um, I wanna bring this back down. Um, let's see what 50,000 looks like. Um, cut into that. Uh oh. There's our problem with that. So we're going to 
we're going to cut, we're going to, um, let's go new body, sorry. Let's go join, nope, does not look right. I'm not sure why we're not able to just grab that. Intersection, no. Um, how come cut doesn't work on that? Oh, I see that section's up too high. Mm, okay, so let's do this. We'll go symmetrical. We'll go 50,000 symmetrical. So what was happening was the curvature was allowing that top edge to, to come out like that. So we got this. Um, let's leave that for right now. And let's take a look at it. Do a quick dimension on the length of that. I want to go from here to here. So this says that um, my distance is 741. So if my two legs are 590, so 590 is the adjacent and 590 is the opposite, then the hypotenuse is, should be 834. So we've got to come down a little bit more on that. All right, so we've got to go a little deeper along that. Yeah, and actually it looks like it needs to go a little bit deeper, doesn't it? So this line, let's go back in here. We're gonna do a little bit of guesswork. Let's see what 60,000 looks like. Let's inspect it from there. This line to this line. 761. Oh, we gotta go quite a bit more. Let's go 100. Oh, it's definitely not 100. I'll be cut into it. 80, maybe 80 thousandths. No, nope, it's 8 thousandths. 80 thousandths. Um, I don't know that it looks like it goes into it that much. It should just barely go into. No, it actually does go into the counterboard, doesn't it? Okay. I don't even really know my own drawings, I don't think. Let's see what 100 into it looks like. I didn't really think it went in that far before. Let's do an inspection on it here to there. 841. I think 841 was our magic number, wasn't it? At 590 for the adjacent and 590 for the opposite. That means our hypotenuse is 834. It's really close. Okay, so I can live with that. All right, so we've got these flats going across there. And if you notice, <clears throat> it's it's got a little edge right here on both of them, right here that kind of cuts into it. That's gonna be problematic for us later on. So let's go ahead and get that fixed. So I like what I have, so I'm gonna do a file save. But I'm going to go back into the original drawing, and this is really the easy part to fix on it. I want to make this 1.2 and make this 600 and then finish that sketch. Now we get this nice edge across here uh, so that it's like a full face mill pass or a end mill pass across the top of it. Okay, man, that was a lot harder than it usually is. I'm not sure what happened there. I kind of lost my mind. All right, so let's do a file save. And we like that. And then we're going to do another circular pattern. Uh, we're going to do, this is our object. And um, we're going to go around. Oops, back up, sorry. This is our object, and this is our axis. And we want three of those, worked out really good. 
We got three faces across there. Okay. Now, even though I had about a hundred mess ups, we have basically what we want. And so if we, when we were in class the other day, we talked about this a little bit. Um, do a file save. That's the way you got this thing down. And then, um, I don't want those lines in there. I don't want to see all that stuff. That looks terrible. Turn that sketch off. Looks like an amateur did that. It's because an amateur did do that. All right, so I've got these three faces. I've got these six faces around here with these holes in them. And I actually thought about tapping one of these holes. Uh, so if you're familiar with what this part really is, it's uh, for our Fanic robots. Um, the back sides of them, they, they, will, they got a hole pattern that they will bolt in um, on the end of arm tooling. The, the well, the the um, just the end of our robot on our Fanix, and it bolt on there. And then um, the idea is that we'll run a rod through this counter bore, and it's three quarter diameter. And then that way we can extend the length of the arm. It makes it easier to get into uh, like the mini mills and and some of the VF threes, so that we can change parts. You, using the Fanix, we, we love the universal robots, but um, the Fanix are, are really good for that stuff too, especially for your long run um, production stuff. So, okay, this is how um, we make just this, this multi-axis stuff on here. Um, next, we will do probably in class, um, the actual uh, milling of all of these operations. First thing that we'll have to do is we'll turn these things upside down. We'll mill the dovetail and everything on the back side. And, or <clears throat> we could also just do some soft jaws with just a two inch diameter by three eighths deep or 300 deep counter bore in there. That'd be enough to hold this part. Cause when we put it in orientation won't matter. Um, once we take it out, orientation matters for sure. But um, I want us to get used to doing some dovetail stuff. Okay, so this will take care of what we have for um, just right now. And so go ahead and get started on this and then we'll uh, keep going. All right, see ya.